what would Jesus do? Would Jesus support the death penalty? Jesus was too smart to ever run for public office, Anderson. That's what Jesus would do. Well, that right there is what people call the Huckabee factor. Sure, he didn't really answer the question, but his response made some people like him all the more. Just about every time the Republicans debate, Giuliani goes after Romney, Romney goes after Giuliani, Fred Thompson gets in a shot or two, and Mike Huckabee gains a little ground. People say they like his even temperament, his authenticity, even those who disagree with him on hot-button issues like religion and abortion. Recently, I got a look at Governor Huckabee's style and substance up close, traveling with the candidate in New Hampshire. Do you feel uh, the momentum actually, on the campaign trail? I do. I mean, I really do. Well, crowds are bigger? Well, it's, it's several things. N not only the crowds are bigger, but they're very enthusiastic. Soaring in the Iowa polls, Mike Huckabee is reaching beyond the Christian conservatives who first ignited his dark horse campaign. He spent the weekend in New Hampshire, a Southern Baptist minister stumping for Yankee votes. First on Friday at the Chamber of Commerce in Concord. Great to see you, John. Around. You know what? What's going on? It's a new day. <laughs> Used to, I was lucky if I had one print guy from a weekly. <laughs> the focus this morning, taxes, education, not abortion, same-sex marriage, or religion. The issues that have lifted his campaign so far. How do you like your um, surging number in Iowa? Uh, I like it a lot. In New Hampshire, it will be a tougher sell. Faith isn't as much of a factor here. Other candidates have spent millions on commercials, built formidable political machines. Anderson, do you want to get in the back seat with me? Sure, that would be great. Huckabee's campaign is bare bones. You travel with a candidate like Rudy Giuliani, and he's got a huge entourage of people. Yeah. Or uh, even, you know, John McCain used to. Yeah. But you know... I mean, you've got this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a real hurt. That, 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 that ought to hurt, Greg. I got this guy. <laughs> You see, this guy, he's so much better than the next 10 guys. Uh -huh. What do you think the biggest challenge you face in New Hampshire is? Just simply being known. I'm an obscure governor from a southern state, but I'm not the first one that's ever been up here either. He's talking about Bill Clinton. Both men were born in Hope, Arkansas. Huckabee took over the governor's mansion shortly after Clinton won the White House. And though a Republican governor from predominantly Democratic Arkansas says something about his appeal, many Republicans remain unconvinced. Economic conservatives charge on taxes and spending, Huckabee and Clinton are cut from the same cloth. There was a, a quote from a Republican state senator in Arkansas who said that you have a, a preacher's mentality when it comes to spending, that you see needs and you believe it's government's responsibility to fill those needs. I don't see it that way. But you did raise taxes on fuel, on sales, on cigarettes, on beer. When we raised taxes for fuel, we did it to rebuild our road program. Is it possible to be, to be too compassionate a conservative? Uh, a conservative means you want to conserve the best there is. We make government the best it can be and the most competent it can be. We make it limited. We don't make it non-existent. In New Hampshire, fiscal discipline isn't Huckabee's hey, only soft spot. His evangelical cold, faith also that. draws some suspicion. We watch as he defends himself to one reporter. There's this fear that if a person has faith that they are going to impose it on everybody. Quite the opposite. Huckabee freely admits, however, religion is central to his life. Do you have a favorite Bible passage? I do. Uh, New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That, that verse came to me at a very important time in my life when I was a teenager. Uh, I grew up without a lot of self-confidence, you know, being the kid that didn't have sometimes what I thought I needed to be as good as the other kids. And that verse really kind of gave me the understanding that, um, you know, it's not what I have, but I can do anything. <laughs> Which is why perhaps this is Mike Huckabee's moment. <laughs> On the campaign trail, he comes off as authentic, unnatural. He's quick to point out he may be a preacher, but he's no prude. He loves his rock and roll and all but worships Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards, who years ago got a ticket in Arkansas. And you pardon Keith Richards. I pardon Keith Richards for $162 misdemeanor traffic violation. <laughs> that may come back in the general election, you know. I hope it does. <laughs> Huckabee even does an excellent Keith Richards impression. We get to talking and Keith says, uh, hey man, you know I've been here before. You know the chef at Fort Ice today? <laughs> he hopes one day to jam with Richards, but for now he's content to strum along with the high school rock band in Tilton, New Hampshire. Winning over Republicans one note at a time. 
We found out some interesting facts about Mike Huckabee. Let's check the raw data. His campaign has spent about $1.7 million so far, or about $52 million less than Mitt Romney's. His consulting firm once advised Bill Clinton and former Russian President Boris Yeltsin. Huckabee was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2003. Since then, he's lost more than 100 pounds and has completed four marathons. And he has never had a sip of beer. My visit with Mike Huckabee was punctuated by a story that nobody in New Hampshire saw coming, the hostage drama at Clinton headquarters in Rochester, New Hampshire. Erica Hill has an update. Mitt Romney's. His consulting firm once advised Bill Clinton and former Russian President Boris Yeltsin. Huckabee was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2003. Since then, he's lost more than 100 pounds and has completed four marathons. And he has never had a sip of beer.